What's going on, Sure Gang? My name is Camden. I hope you guys are having a great day. In today's video, we're doing a nice little rundown on our favorite stocks, the meme stocks, known as AMC, BlackBerry, and GameStop. We're gonna start putting recaps like this out every trading day, along with our bags to riches. So as of right now, we've been watching AMC for a little bit over these past couple of days or so, just waiting for our moving averages to take contact. Now, instead of contact, you actually got bearish results. So today is the day that you ended up getting that pullback in AMC's float. Let's bring it into a longer term viewpoint just to see what we should be expecting in a longer term swing. Get rid of our price action and you can tell that our moving averages are trying to bounce in the long term point of view. I mean, as of right now, your moving averages are flat, 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 and this one is slightly descending. So in plain English, you're long-term bullish while you're short-term bearish. This pullback in AMC has been a lot harder, a lot more rougher, and more tedious than anybody expected, including myself, but that's A-OK. -okay because if you're going to get a move for AMC, it's going to be when people least expect it. This is our pullback on the way down. I know it seems like you're not respecting it as of right now, and you ended up gapping below it. So the only other retest other than this is simply a run down to your next level to your other level up here. And this shows prices that could get hit near $13.80. <laughs> It's crappy, I know, especially since a lot of the buyers in the float are just sitting there like a brick wall. There is little to no sellers meeting your buying, but your price action just can't go yet. Uh, you need some market strength or something to give the sellers in the float a catalyst to just get the flying fudge out of here. However, you hit low point to high point. This is what you should be respecting on your way back up. When you get overbought, you get a run like that. And when you get oversold, you get a run like that. A snap back to reality to the downside is like that, while your snap back to reality to the upside Side is going up to this line in this trend. So of course it can take time. You could actually last the whole week down here at this low point, but we're expecting these pullbacks to be a buy signal in AMC's float. If you're taking advantage of these low points, I give you some congratulations because you really do deserve to see the money uh, waiting and sitting on your hands for the perfect time to attack like a shark. In the future, you'll be able to let that cash register ring. And for some of you attacking down here, that future might be in a very, very near manner. Um, if you're loading up on calls down here like I am, of course it could be sour and you could be down so much before you get the moves that you want to get. But understand how volatile AMC is when you tend to go from a pullback into a stretch, especially with you being pinned down here at this low point. I look at it as a spring that's ready to be unleashed to the upside. Next is going to be ticker symbol BlackBerry. Just like AMC, instead of getting the contact, you got that bearish crossover. So it's a little bit more weak than we would have wanted to see. And on a day like today, you actually made the lowest low you've made for BlackBerry ever since you had your January rip. Nonetheless, your rip in 2020. So it really is weak. I don't think there's any other way to look at it other than that. And down here at these lowest prices, you can see we're just looking for any sort of buy signal. I've been putting out some warning signals over these last couple of days um, in BlackBerry's float just to give you guys an image of to what's to come ahead. As you can see, the crowd sentiment, and I mean, this is stronger than AMC, this is stronger than GME, this is stronger than your overall S&P 500. The amount of crowd sentiment pouring in on the bullish side of things for BlackBerry is mind-boggling. It's happened many times in the past. But what tends to happen when you get this crowd sentiment all at once is you get one more pullback or you get something that you don't really expect and it causes the remaining buyers, the people that are quote unquote convicted in the float to second guess their investment. It makes sense. And with all this crowd sentiment pouring in, it would make sense to get everybody's conviction tested, even the ones that are profitable right now. So we're pulling back extremely hard, way more than anybody probably would have imagined. So in today's volatile environment, you could take advantage of these pullbacks, you really can, but this pullback to 580 was like a 25% run or so. This pullback to 580 was like a 35 to 40% run or so, around there. So you're pulling back hard all at once, but um, if you don't have the capital to take advantage of these low points, it's okay. I understand that it's a rough environment as a consumer and the world right now, a lot of people going through financial stress. So um, stay convicted, set price alerts. And if you can't stand to see this red, but you love the company and you love the stock, once again, do what you do best, 
continue to work for it instead of wishing for it. But in today's volatile environment, a lot of red at once could be made up in a snap of a finger. A lot of pain all at once could be made up in a snap of a finger. You just have to be able to give those trends time to play out and nonetheless attack when the time is right. If we can bring you into your hourly candle standpoint, let's actually go to your Weeble setup and Blackberry's float. Your average investor is still up there at $8.17. So you're pulling back harder than imagined. And there's a lot of people just raying out their orders down here at these low points. Of course, with your average investor at eight, me being at $9, we're attacking these low points. But as you can see, it's not really doing much to our average because we're in so much higher up at a high point. And once again, that's A-OK. -okay. You just have to give your trend time to play out. Think of it as you don't want to average down just to flip a profit, right? You want to average down to the point where you're comfortable. I'm sitting up there at $9 on average, um, just with my feet up, you know, with my hands by my head as everybody else's hair is on fire. Of course, it's hard sometimes and it gets rough sometimes. It truly does. But if our market is not going to catch the strength that we want it to catch, then of course it's going to be bringing down stuff like BlackBerry with it. Our favorite stocks like AMC might catch some strength, but it's not going to be the strength that you want to see. Which leaves us to ticker symbol GameStop. On the day, you can see your average investors up there at 159. And when it comes down to GameStop, you have a lot more room that you could actually still peel back to before you want to catch a bounce to bring you to the upside. If we can get rid of your moving averages for just a second, they gave you a sell signal two to three days ago, and you haven't seen strength since then. So uh, it's definitely a little bit more bearish, just like every other stock in this market. Understand this is happening to every single stock. So it's rough, especially as a buyer, it's hard to see through the fog, but understand when it comes to GameStop and to every other stock that we just went over, it's more than just price action. If our market sees strength, we will be able to move a lot more easier to the upside. It won't feel like we're pinned into oblivion. And when it comes down to GameStop, you're long-term bullish. You are just like AMC, but they're trying to swing you into deep, deep short-term bearish territory. Your moving averages are getting crosses under other moving averages you want to stay above. And in plain English, it looks like you still need that closer retest. The 13 MA, which is the green moving average, and then your 48 MA, which is your red moving average. These look like they're starting to converge and you want them to respect. So we could face a lot of red all at once before we get any sort of moves we want to see. If we can bring GameStop into your trading view setup, let's go to your daily candles because once again, uh, a brick wall amount of buyers just like BlackBerry, right? So you're definitely still bullish. It's just having a harder time staying bullish. You can see down here, your price action is starting to pull back lower, which is good if you're a buyer because you're starting to take contact and the moving averages. You get the bounce that you want to see in regards to your moving averages, your price action should lift with it. All we need to see is this moving average, the yellow one up here, to run up higher with your price to break over your ultimatum. If you get that, that's the buy signal on top of the buy signal. And just like all the way back here before you started your January rip, when you took that rip above your ultimatum, that was the buy signal of all buy signals. And that's what stretched you into your highest prices to where you're at now. Of course, it's definitely more bearish than you would want to see. And it's frustrating and it's tedious and all of those other words, but give your trend time to play out and buy when the time is right. And as soon as you take that crossover in the future, you would have set yourself up in a very beautiful fashion. You're still at a massive higher low for GameStop, like you're trying to be at a higher low for AMC. So we're still bullish and we're still trying to stay bullish. It could just get a little bit more rough before we get the moves that we want to see. You got to prepare for the worst as you hope for the best in this market. And as of right now, it's definitely turning into the worst. So you guys keep those feet up, set alerts, just make sure not to run away from the markets because that's exactly what they want you to do. If you run away and you come back in the future, you're going to have to work hard just to get your portfolio back. And it's going to be a fight to once again, get back on the right side of the trade. If you guys think it's rough now, try coming back into the future in a new environment that you missed out on because you weren't paying attention. Last but not least, let's bring in the ticker symbol HYMC, big pusher on the day, up almost 10%. Oh my, this stock might just make it to the moon. With your average investor up there at 218, we're honestly just looking for a nice little short term run to 190, uh, maybe $2 flat as well. You can see that you're given the sell signals on the daily candles, but this was days ago. You're getting a common doji on the day. 
You're trying to get more buyers as you're inching down into the setup, but you're just not getting the strength that you want to see yet. With you getting a 10% pop on the day, that strength that you were waiting for is trying to come to fruition. So tomorrow morning, you might consolidate a little bit more after this pop. Pay attention to these moving averages because you're still long-term bearish in the five minutes. You want the short-term moving averages to pull back into each other to see if they can respect with a bounce. If it gets a little worse before it gets better, tomorrow morning you're going to want your short-term moving averages to bounce off of your long-term moving averages. And that's when things get weird. However, with this clean little breakout signal, it's probably going to test the same areas you broke out at. So let's put a nice little demand zone. And you're going to want to pull back to ranges near 140 to 142 as that buy signal tomorrow. If you're just floating all day and you're not really pulling back to the same areas, I would be weary. Also, if you just continue to stretch into strength, you could take advantage of that highest retest, but I would still be weary on the pullback afterwards. Other than that though, I hope you guys enjoyed this nice little update video. If you guys are here watching right now, make sure to go down in the description below, hit that like button, subscribe button, and make sure to hit that bell as well. It really does wonders to me and the Shrewd Gang. Shrewd Gang. And it just shows YouTube that we can get support. So in return, YouTube can support us. Uh, I'm a college student. A lot of other people in the Shrewd Gang are here to educate, teach, and we're not here for a quick day, a bright week a bright month. We're here for a bright future. So it takes a lot of time, effort, and you have to pay a lot of attention to things other than just price action. With this being said, if you're a new investor, the Shrewd Gang is the best place for you to be. It teaches you a lot and it teaches you that it's way more than just what you're seeing in front of the screen. Our markets nationally and globally are trying to take a massive pivot from these lowest points. And some of the biggest names that financial media has been putting in your ears for the past two to three years might not be the biggest names you're going to be hearing about in the future. So make sure you keep your feet up, hope for the best as you prepare for the worst, and live, breathe, and change with the market so you're not left behind. With this being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Stay safe out there so I can see you guys tomorrow. Shrewd gang, have a good one as well. Peace out. Uh...